Welcome along ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to 2022. Basically the, the reason for this video, I don't know if this is even going to make it onto YouTube, but I've got myself a new uh, helmet cam. I've got now the Hero 10, the new Hero 10. So I want to go out and before I go out in anger and try and record a bike review or do something important with it, I wanted to give it just a test to see how it works. Um, I've also got myself the new Multistrada V4S to play on. So this is in the new Multi, the V4 Multi. This is my first time I've ridden it actually. But before I do a review or you know a, a video on this bike, I want to make sure the camera setup's working, the audio's good, the video quality is good because there's so many different options with this Hero. I mean, you can have different levels of stabilisation. I've actually got this enabled with the you know the the basic stabilization so not extra stabilization you can have it boosted this is the normal so honestly when i move my helmet you know how much movement does it give i mean i've been using the hero 4 for the last seven years doing this motor vlogging i'm still all my videos up until this point today have been on the hero 4 well these have the hero 2 but the most recent hero i've been using is the 4 and uh, that's always been such a good camera and the reason i haven't upgraded it before now is because it's fantastic with the audio the audio works 99 percent of the time whereas i hear nothing but problems from people who've got the you know the six the seven the eight the nine uh gopro of missing audio and there's nothing worse than going out recording a review only to get home look at your audio and see your mic wasn't working you have to do it all again so what i will do as part of this video i will stop and i'll change the settings on the gopro and you tell me if you can see any difference between you know the quality of the higher bit rate there's also color grading up you know there's a lot of options with the with the hero 4 and also the stabilization i'll try max stabilization so this is on the standard stabilization if i move my head left and right like i was pulling out from a junction which is always horrible if you have no stabilization on your helmet um now how is that is that enough stabilization and you know i'm not an adventure bike man really you know adventure bikes it's not really my thing i do get it if you do a lot of miles and all that you know but if there was one adventure bike which could work for me well it would be the pike's peak version of this with a 17 inch front wheel to be honest but this thing is a beast it's beastly so let me pull over and i'm going to go to the uh the higher stabilization rate so we go maximum stabilization and it stretches the picture slightly so the picture quality will also drop off a bit with the higher stabilization let's have a look go on love on you go nothing happening here so i've now got you on the super view sorry so i've now got you on the boosted stabilization so as i move my head you know i should be moving my head a fair bit before your screen uses because i basically zoomed in on the picture a bit more now so the quality may have suffered slightly i don't know if you can tell that but the stabilization is increased naughty little acro on this <laughs> what's the uh, audio like for the engine Are we getting a bit of that Oh, it's really annoying I'm, because I've got my glasses on I have to keep opening my helmet because I've got a bit of a steam up going on steam up situation in this when it's cold and you're talking obviously it makes you steam up so that's a bit annoying but yeah that's that, that is now what they call boosted um, stabilization so as I move my head I'm moving my head around now can you tell I'm moving my head around from the image if I go all the way to the left it must change and all the way to the right but you know it makes a much more stable picture but i can't help but feel i'm doing it's to the speed limit i'm doing 60 miles an hour but it doesn't look as fast does it because it's so stable it looks like i'm not going quick doesn't it so that's what i don't like about the boosted um stabilization this is why i, I want to go for just the minimum so when i play this back hopefully the minimum was was adequate so as you would have seen i've now bought myself a new bike I've got myself the K8 GSXR. If you haven't seen my video revealing the K8 GSXR, I'll link it up the top there. But um, yeah, I, as I explained in that video, you know, I was just cruising eBay and thinking, what am I going to use on track this year? 
because you know I thought I could reach out to the manufacturers what was going on here I could reach reach out to the manufacturers and you know get another long termer perhaps but you know it's, it's all very well doing that and it's fantastic having a free bike for the season I'm not knocking it I know everyone would absolutely love that opportunity so I'm not knocking it but I just fancy something of my own you're so limited with what you can do with a, with a press bike, you know. I just wanted a bit more flexibility. And I've got limited space in the garage, obviously. You can only really fit four bikes in there, tops, and maybe a fifth as a loner, you know, um, you know, as a, pre as a press bike. So I thought, what shall I do? And I wanted something a bit older. I, want, I fancied going through, and a lot of people always say on the channel, you know, all about some older bikes, chops. It's all very well, this new stuff. I can't afford that review some more affordable bikes so i thought I'd, i quite fancied and i love bikes from the 2000 era i love them you know I, I also fancy something without all the electronics as well i don't know you know the electronics on the latest bikes are absolutely amazing now this for instance it's got so much tech on this but there's something to be said for going back to basics you know my, my hyper motard will be electronic free abs well, the abs is a good one an abs is a if an abs system is a good system then fantastic let's have abs early abs systems are not so good you know they're very rudimentary so you know early abs systems especially if you want to take a bike on track they're not the best so i'd rather have it without abs i may when i stick it through a hedge you can come back to me and say chops you said you didn't want abs now look at you you're in a hedge so you know that, that could be a bad thing having no abs but I, I i fancy having something raw and i don't know if you know i don't know I, I just fancy having something unaided you know your right wrist is your traction control and all <laughs> all of that nonsense hello mate yeah you've got a spinning uh cutter going on there uh where's the horn on this let me come past him oh dear i see the problem yeah, you can keep that spinning cutting wheel away from me, thanks. So yeah, I just fancied something a bit more back to basics and I'd really like the style of those 2000 era sports bikes. I just think they look fantastic and being a bigger guy, they're actually physically bigger machines. You know, the, the modern sports bikes, everything has shrunk, you know, that everything is reduced in size. Being a bigger guy, I wanted a bit of bike underneath of me, you know. And you get a bit of storage under the seat and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't know. And, 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 and those age bikes, they're, first and foremost, they're road bikes. Now, the sports bikes from that era are first, are first and foremost road bikes. And that's the important thing. If you want a sports bike on the road, you really want one which is designed for the road and not for the track. You know, the, the latest generation of sports bikes really are designed to be first and foremost track bikes you know leader bikes are, are designed to be track bikes they've obviously the bmw 1000 double r yeah, the gsxr they, they've got considerations for the road at least bikes like the r1 are, they're just complete track bikes to me you know the position on them is really uncomfortable that's why the, i think that's half the problem why sports bikes are dying because not everyone wants to spend 20 grand on a bike and take it on track you don't want to buy a bike it's, its primary purpose is to go on track i don't understand that so in the 2000s they had it right you know these sports bikes were designed to be first and foremost good road bikes and yes you could also take them on track and they'd make a pretty decent track bike if you had done a few mods to them but even still in standard form you know they could hold their own on track but they're about being good road bikes and, and that's what makes sense to me and that is why sports bikes are dying off and everyone's buying adventure bikes because they're, they're too uncomfortable now they're just too uncomfortable so uh yeah i fancied a, a 2000 i actually was looking at older bikes i was looking at eight i was looking at 90s bikes when i was younger i had a, a zxr 750 h1 i was looking at those i still love the look of those i was also looking at yzf um 750s they're a really reasonable price i've looked at a few of those as well and i thought yeah it's going to a going to a 90s bike if you want to do a few track days on it it's going to be a, a constant tinker you're, you're constantly going to be in the garage fiddling 
and I didn't want something which I had to constantly fiddle to keep it running, you know, optimally. Obviously, they're all carbed. Carb systems are getting old. All the diaphragms and rubbers in the carbs are starting to perish, you know. So it made sense to me to go for a 2000 bike, a bike from that era. So that's what I did. And I love the R, I love the RR fire blade, as I said and in my video, but that bike came up and it was just so clean, so tidy. You know, it was like, oh yeah, I've got to have that one. That's amazing. And I did pay a bit more for it, but uh, I don't want to talk too much about the price because I don't want to sell that one down. You said, you chops, you said you only bought it for that much. Now you're looking for this much. So I'm not going to talk about price, but let's just say it was £10,000 cheaper than what uh, BMW wanted for the S1000RR. So by not buying the S1000RR and buying the GSX-R, I've got an extra 10 grand in my pocket. Because a few people have said, well, why did you just buy the S1000RR? You've got to bought another sports bike now. Yeah, I'm 10 grand better off, mate. <laughs> I'm not made of money. So what's coming for 2022 on the channel? Well, obviously I mentioned I'm going to be doing a series on older motorcycles, bikes from the 2000s. So, you know, it's, it's, the reason I haven't done more of this is it's very difficult to get on, you know, subscribers' bikes because there's issues of insurance. If you were, the worst was to happen and you came off it, it would be an absolute nightmare, wouldn't it? And sometimes you need a bike for a little bit longer to be able to put together a decent, coherent review rather than just popping on it for 15 minutes and you know, borrowing it. And, you know, you need it a little bit longer sometimes. So I was hoping to work with Wheels Motorcycles and actually use their... Um, you know, they're, they're second-hand bikes. They've got a lot of second-hand bikes at wheels. You know, perfect stuff from the 2000s. And I thought, well, can I borrow those? As well as the long, as well as the new press machines, uh, demo bikes they have, could I get access to their second-hand bikes? But unfortunately, I can, but I have to go to Peterborough to ride them. They can't bring them down to me because of the way it works with second-hand bikes. Of course, they need them available if someone wants to view it to buy it. I mean, that's the priority. You know, people want to view these bikes to buy them and they also have to prep them for sale as well. So it's quite complicated, but the upshot is, is, of it is I have to go to Peterborough. I'll spend the day in Peterborough, ride as many as I can. It's not, I'd love to have them for a week and you know, go through real detail with these used bikes, but can't do that. So it's, it, it's a little bit compromised than what I really wanted, but it's, it's better than nothing. So it'll just be like an hour out or just go to Peterborough and ride two, one in the morning, one in the afternoon and spend the morning and afternoon with them and bring as, you know, as much as you can. I mean, when you jump on a bike, you, you straight away you know if you like. Normally, you get that feeling, you ride it, you know if you like it almost immediately. You don't have to go far, and it doesn't take long to sort of bring some feedback about about the bike. But it's not quite the same with as living with it for a little bit longer. But it is what it is. If there, you know, if 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 a subscriber does have a good bike, and we, you know, I, I'll see if I could be covered by B Moto to be insured on it. You know, and if we plan it properly. If you're localish to me, which I'm sort of in the Portsmouth area, you know, you can come down to me or I can come up to you, depending on what the bike is, and we can take it out for a morning or afternoon. Um, you know, if it's something a little bit special, a little bit different. The bikes I'm thinking is, you know, probably the K1 GSXR. I mean, that was like the, the benchmark for the, G, the, the, the Lita GSXR, wasn't it? The K1 GSXR, the R1s, but not just sports bikes, you know, like classic. Ducati Monsters, but I don't think when the first Monster came out. But you know, bikes which defined the era. That's what I'm interested in. Obviously the ZX-10, the ZX-10R, that because 2004, I have ridden one of those before, but I wouldn't mind revisiting that. Sort of 2004 ZX-10R, you know, bikes like that. Absolute corkers. And then also the 90s bikes, like I mentioned, the, the YZR 750s, you know, Fireblades obviously. That sort of stuff. I would love to uh, get my ass on that sort of thing as well. So, if you got something a little bit different, I don't, my dream bike is an RD500. My absolute dream bike is an RD500 or probably RG500s up there as well. So, either one of those. <laughs> that's a big ask because they're worth serious money now. You know, road going versions of those. But I would love to ride some sort of 500cc two-stroke. Fantastic. I used to own a KR1, a KR1S and a TZR 250. If you've got any of the 250 Screamers, I'd also love to ride one of those again because 
and I was brought up on those bikes. I love those 250 Screamers. They're tiny, of course, for I'm a big massive guy, but I I'd love to ride one and do a little review of a 250 Smoker again. And just to ride one of those again, it's been 25 years since I've ridden a KR1. You know, can imagine riding it again, that would be amazing. So if you've got something interesting, you know, leave a message perhaps in the uh, description in the description you can't do that in the comments and I'll you know let's let's get talking let's get talking me and you and so we can set something up camera still going interested to see how long the battery lasts on it as well especially in these sort of cooler temperatures you know people have said it can lock up I've put the latest firmware on it obviously it's cold today it's recording 4k 60 so you know it's done a lot of processing but she's remaining cool with the Hero 10, you don't need that great big audio. You don't need it with the 9 either. You know, the great big audio adapter, it's like that this, this big. You, know, you have to mount to plug a mic in. And that's always been another problem as well. With uh, That's why I haven't upgraded to a camera. That's another reason. But with the 9, there's this thing called the media mod. And you can see it in the mirror there. Look, that's, that's, that's it. it. The camera fits inside this little module. And it basically gives you the the option to plug it gives it a three and a half inch mic jack in the back of the camera so you can just plug a normal three and a half inch mic jack into the into the media mod which is connected to the camera without having too much weight and bulk on your helmet you know and that's the uh that's the thing with the nine and the ten you could do that so providing the audio is good from this ride i think i'm set i think i'm set for the uh, proper test ride reviews and stuff 4k cool. treating you it's all dirty that screw. Look at the screen, it's absolutely filthy. I think that was on the trailer. I do apologise, you've been you've been looking through that your view, haven't you? There you go, you can actually see now. Apologies. Alright, I've had enough of this. Don't look. Don't look, yeah, shut your eyes again. Alright, let's get it on the motorway and see how the blind spot indicator thingies work. Whee, it's a bit slippery. there we go guys anyway it's just a very quick video to let you know to, for me to test my camera basically so come and join me for a, a quick ride on a Multistrada while I test out the new camera so uh, next time I will do a full review of this bike there'll be a full review of this bike I'm going to take it so I haven't decided where to take it yet let me know where I should take it well I'm going to have done it by the time this video is out so that won't help but I'm going to take this somewhere I might go to Beachy Head or something bit of a spin on this bit of a distance ride see how I get on I've got all the panniers as well so I'll stock up the panniers take my drone make a day of it take my sandwiches and there'll be a full review coming of the uh, the new Multistrada V4 I want to borrow the Pikes Peak one as well with the 17 inch front wheel <laughs> I want that one all of the KTM's are going to be ridden the new KTM's including the new Super Duke with the electronic suspension and uh, yeah so it's going to be a good year it's going to be a good year I've also got a gas gas 350f at home so there could be a bit of off-road videos coming as well so i did promise you i would take a gas gas out for a bit of lane action so that's going to be coming as well there's all sorts of stuff coming so if you want hit that subscribe button and i will see you on the next video stay there you see you there guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. 